Hey folks, we're going to take a look at some data. Solar polar field since 2003, a chart from Stanford University. We need to be zoomed in, so I the years as we scroll up. We'll put the years in the center of the columns to make it easier. Folks, there's sunspot data, flaring levels, geomagnetic conditions, all fringely suggested to potentially affect human existence, but these, the solar polar fields, have never been considered important for life on Earth. I strongly disagree. We're going to start at the present and go backwards year by year. Please consider that the most relevant magnetic points here are the peaks, troughs, and when the magnetic lines cross the baseline to switch polarity, and when the polar baselines individually cross each other. Keep that in mind while I come to the USGS website for earthquake searches. Going to pull the biggest earthquake since 2007 first, 7.8 and higher. I chose 2007 because this is when the sun's coronal hole anomalies occurred, breaking from the normal polar position at cycle minimum, a point I've belabored for more than two years now. Well here they are, all plotted, the list on the left from most recent to earlier down at the bottom. Two of those quakes occurred in 2013, and I'll plot them on the solar polar fields chart here. May 25, 2013, 8.3 in Russia as the blue and red cross each other with red diving down across the baseline just days later. Would also like to point out some significant planetary geometry. Venus and Mercury, less than two days from conjoining Jupiter as well, complemented by a full moon. Our primary earthquake factor at this channel is coronal holes and we had them both north and south. 8.0 in the Solomon Islands hit February 6, 2013, at the peak of that mini-cycle. Again, planets conjoining just astride of the sun. Coronal holes, both north and south. Three events in 2012, but only two days involved. The latter, October 27th, as the blue and red again crossed each other, took the 7.8 in Canada. Saturn was hiding behind the sun in conjunction, and when we tilt around, you can see Mars and Jupiter on opposite sides of Earth. It's hard to see without the field chart here, but a crack in those fields did face Earth that day. Other big day in 2012 was April 11th. Two eight-pointers. Again, peak of a mini-cycle. Earth was between Mars and Mercury 24 hours earlier and was less than a week until the Saturn opposition of the Sun. This was one of the most diabolical coronal holes we had ever seen. Fields went haywire. The only quake on the list from 2011 was the big one, Japan, Fukushima. Bit of a double peak more than 2012, and the second matches the tsunami. One of the biggest coronal holes we've ever seen, and the most peculiar planetary geometry. Focus on the outer planets all down below. Now we're going to zoom in, all still down below. Folks, despite being the third closest planet to the sun, Earth was the furthest planet out in this direction over nearly the full 180 degree half arc. Had just seen Mars conjoin the Sun and was just a few days from being in that major lineup across there. Three important days in 2010. Here again we see the double peak, now tremendously significant, but we're going to start with the latest, October 27th. Kind of at that double trough. Hey, I remember those guys. Fancy seeing you there. Earth had also just exited a major long-range conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter. Back to the double peak. Latter date is April 6, 2010, which predates the SDO. Luckily, Dr. Tony Phillips was watching for us at spaceweather.com and has the easiest site archive for past dates data I've ever seen. Anyway, there was a major coronal hole that was finishing up its Earth-facing position, and I'm really starting to think that these blokes are stalking me. Go away. The 8.8 .8 in Chile needs no introduction, but it does fall on the first peak of that mini-cycle. Earth-facing coronal hole on that day actually spanned across the equator, and King Zeus took the podium conjoining the sun. I bet you're seeing a pattern, but I'm going for more than coincidence here. Three more significant days in 2009. You see a break between them there because the USGS put the same quake on there twice. All three at the bottom of this cycle trough. The latest on October 7th is one of the very few not to have a coronal hole, but Earth had watched the inner children conjoin 36 hours earlier while Saturn took the opportunity to jump right in afterwards, and I wonder if any of them even noticed Uranus with multiple birds in one crosshair. Just days earlier, the 8.1. We had a modest coronal hole that day, 
and that was indeed the beginning of Uranus eyeing planets past the blue dot. Months before, on July 15th, we began the trough with Neptune and Jupiter conjoining from Earth, Mercury simultaneously hiding behind the Sun. 2008 was the odd year out. It was the last time the overall magnetic baseline cross of the central purple and green lines were significant for the quaking of the highest magnitude, switching polarities. No coronal holes or significant planetary positions, though. 2007 was a major year. Five matching quakes on four different days. Let's go ahead and plot those four significant days. The latest, December 9th. Another cross of the baseline by the central purple and green lines to switch polarity. There was a coronal hole facing Earth that day, and in one more day, Mercury and the Sun would conjoin, followed a day later by the solidification of a long-range four-planet lineup complemented by a new moon, where Pluto is actually much closer to the alignment than it looks here in JPL. Magenta is September 12th, at the base of the purple and green lines. A double day again. Corona hole faced Earth while we were days removed from the Mars opposition of Jupiter. Neptune was geocentrically opposing Venus, all the while Uranus sat directly opposing the Sun, bolstered by a new moon. Less than a month earlier, in orange, August 14th, at the blue trough, we had a pair of corona holes that day actually. And while the usual suspects still had a whopping four days until they lined up, Saturn was already hitching a ride along Venus's line of sight. Next we come to April 1st, between red peaking but hitting the second blue peak down there, coronal hole, Mercury conjoined with Uranus. There was also an eight-pointer on January 12, 2007 that is the only non-fitting quake of the entire bunch to these solar polar fields. Did, however, have a solid coronal hole and one of the familiar suspects. I'll speed this up going through the other years on the chart, 2006 back through 2003, and for the sake of time, we'll just look at the biggest, 8.0 and higher. The latest of those, November 15, 2006. Purple and green crossed the baseline to switch polarity, and we took an 8.3 in the Kuril Islands. Earth had just left one conjunction and headed into that Jupiter-Venus dance once more. 8.0 in Tonga on May 3rd, 2006, and look where they changed polarity again. King Zeus, again with Earth blocking his view of our star, and you guessed it, Earth facing coronal hole. Again, this is the same quake listed twice for some reason, 8.6 on March 28, 2005, right along with the second, the higher peak of the mini cycle. Venus conjoining the Sun with Mercury less than two days away from joining, Corona hole leaving, another unmentioned on the south, and a third incoming at the same time. Same 2004 Christmas tsunami listed twice. Let's lump in the 8.1 below from just two days earlier. Earth facing Corona hole, and our old friends yet again. And the first major quake after the last solar pole flip was September 25, 2003, at the base of the blue and the purple in that cycle. Another of the rare ones lacking a corona hole, but with Mars conjoining Uranus. And I suppose you saw Jupiter swing back there too. Spoiler, these four are so close that Jupiter was just seen between Earth and those other two. As close as to conjunction as you get without actually conjoining. If you were to plot all the seven magnitude quakes and higher from 2003 to now, you'd find that the non-mentioned peaks, troughs, and crosses of the solar polar fields are not going to hold on to every one of those quakes but they're capturing far more than their pro rata share of an otherwise random distribution. The January and March 2009 peaks are the best proof of that. The odd quake lulls where the coronal holes and planets seem not to matter as much could be plotted on here too, but with slightly lower correlation. Still something we're missing when it comes to those curious, rare, extended absenteeisms. That full video with all those things mentioned, however, take a very long time to compile, and if I don't mind saying so, I think we've got some good things to go on now, and I know 160,000 plus people who are going to keep doing it along with me. Be safe everyone.